Hello everyone. We are so happy to be with all of you and please receive greetings from Guatemala. And uh, we want to present this PowerPoint where we have uh, the first part will be in hurricane relief delivery. And uh, in the picture, you can see the ILA has staff gathered with the regional coordinators, Pastor Santos Chung, Pastor Raul Cao, and Pastor Julio Luz to coordinate and plan the best way to respond. We gather information through them, such as what kind of food was needed, supplies, and how many families were in need. In the next presentation, you will see that we got supplies at the Lutheran Center, and we load a big truck and the pickup truck with solar lamps from Helps International, hygiene supplies and food like beans, rice, pasta, uh, and the corn was both in Playa Grande and Petén. In the next one, you will see that we took the opportunity as well in this trip to get Sunday school material for all of the children in the communities. It was a great way to respond to COVID and hurricane relief as it has been a long year as our school year starts in January and ends in October. We were thinking the children needed support, care and motivation to brighten their lives a little bit after struggling with no schools open and more challenges from hurricane. The Sunday school teachers got the special materials to have a week of classes with children, make, time, make the time before Christmas special. And uh, in the next picture, you will see that the journey started at 3 a.m. on December 1st. Our goal was to get to Petén in Poptun. So on December 2nd, we were going to start our trip to the communities. It was a challenge as the roads were in bad shape, some of the bridges down and a lot of water. And in the next one, you will see that in some villages, uh, we got help to be able to continue the road pushing a big truck just happens in the villages. They are so caring and strong. Also in some parts, we have to turn around as the road was in bad shape. And, uh, and even though when uh, you see in the next picture that we were close to the communities and the road was gone, the leaders go there in the other side of the road and we in the other side of the road and we walk different parts to deliver the supplies. And uh, in the next one, you, we were overwhelmed to see all of the destructions and how difficult in the midst of pandemic time recovered from pandemic and two hurricanes with no medicine, with no good health systems. It was a hard trip in so many different ways and we did what we could. And in spite of the fact in Guatemala, we were feeling kind of down guys sustained us through all of you to feel the love of our partner congregations who responded so fast who were willing to ask what can we do and after hearing the news of our, our struggles in guatemala knowing you are struggling as well we have felt so blessed also the leaders were working so hard gathering people in the two projects because we deliver supplies in july as well for covid and now in December, delivering supplies because of the hurricane and the leaders responded so fast and wanted to help in giving the supplies and working tireless so people could receive all of the supplies that you sent. Also in the next picture, you can see uh, the pastoral team that you know, and they are amazing people who are always willing to do whatever is needed to lift heavy weight to drive, to pack, to pray, and we are so grateful for them as well. Uh, and you will see in the next one that we are trying to give you an idea that 40,000 pounds of corn were delivered, plus beans, pasta, and uh, this picture was taken in Santa Elena in Coban. And in the next one, you can see in San Antonio, Ceja, that the solar lamps were delivered uh, in in all of the villages. And in the next one, you can see the elder leaders uh, were present as well, giving thanks to God and all of you for the support. Nazario and Maria from Saculeo in the picture, 
And the lady on the other picture in the left side, we don't remember her name as she's not a member of ELAC, but she also received uh, supplies. Um, we can move to the next one. And it was a privilege to witness how God's love was shared in the communities. As the villages were, who weren't affected asked us to give the supplies to families who were affected in other villages. Families who are not part of ELAC received supplies because of ELAC families gave the opportunity to them. Uh, in the next one, you can see a picture in Santa Amelia, just a little bit of the trip. We were having uh, council meetings in the churches and you will see in the next, well, in the next uh, slide that the Sunday school supplies and also a flooding in the crops in Santa Amelia that I have to tell you that we have so, so many pictures from the communities that we are showing just a, a few of them. And you can see in the next one, the council from Aurora receiving the food and supplies as well. And uh, in the next picture, you will see a lot of fun with the children that we have reading uh, Bible stories, coloring pages and playing with them. And in the next one, you will see that we were wearing masks all the time as we were getting into the villages from outside the village. And we were very careful to take all of the health measures in order not to get COVID to the villages. Uh, you will see that we have worship services in the next slide. We have 19 baptisms, 12 first communions during our visit. And wearing masks all the time in the warm weather was a little bit challenging. And we, but we knew that that was needed. Um, in the next one, you can see that all of the pictures, those are our videos, but we put them on, on picture because we couldn't share all of them in so short time. And uh, are from people who wanted to express themselves and thank you for your support, prayers, and especially they, they were saying, thank you for not forgetting us, we miss you. And the most popular question they were asking us were, when are you going to visit to Guatemala? And of course, more than 1,000 thank you. Uh, COVID has affected all over the world, our daily lives, and we have our trust in God and we prevent. And we are grateful the communities are doing well because all of you know the challenges with no medicine or health clinics. We think it was so helpful the first COVID emergency response it was key in this process when it was so bad and we didn't know much about the virus. This is about the COVID and uh, hurricane relief. And now, I don't know if you have some questions that we can answer. Yes. Uh, so if anybody has any questions to ask, this would be a great time just to unmute yourself and ask Pastor Karin. I have a question. Uh-oh, I may have lost myself. No, Gin Ginger, I see you. Yes, what's your question? Okay. Um, when can we come back? It is a difficult question to answer <laughs> as, uh, as we don't have, a, we have gotten some news about the vaccine getting into Guatemala, but it will take time. We have gotten news that it will be maybe in July or December and it's uncertain so we cannot give us a specific date. So the best thing we can do now from here is pray and raise awareness about what you're doing and try to get you more funds right? Is there anything else pastor? Yes and, and we'll continue uh, in, in touch and conversation like this one is useful so people can get involved and uh, talking with churches and praying together it's a great way to be connected. Okay. okay, thank you. Great question, thank you, Ginger. Are there other questions that, at the moment? Is your elementary school able to be open? Yeah, you are going to go next in the school, elementary school. If you, if you want, we can move forward with the next slide oh. so we can talk about the elementary school. <laughs> Yes, that's a wonderful segue. Thank you, Nancy. Um, sure, Pastor Karin, take it away. 
Yes, and now with Colegio Luterano Agustino de Guatemala, uh, you can move to the next slide. Uh, we thank uh, all of you for the concerns and the support in order to get this building in shape. As you can see, the children were there at the school building for a week. Uh, they were so excited about the new school building and then the government closed the in-person classes for another two months. So the kids were there for a week and now they are not there. But that week that they could get there and in two different groups, we have we had two days during the week and two days for another group. They were super excited and really happy to be in the new school building. So we can move forward with the next uh, slides. And uh, you can see more of the classes there. The, the new school building is a, it's a a big difference, it's a big property. And, uh, and next time you come, you are going to be able to visit the new school building and you will see in person what we are talking about. And in the next slide, you will see the, the most of the renovations have been internal, water pipes, electricity. We have had lots of fun with Carlos, the Mason, finding water filtrations. The electricity was like a puzzle that took about three months to figure it out. And the next one you can see how to, we had to add electrical boxes and hundreds of meters of electrical cable. And uh, we can move to the next one. And uh, when we see this, we feel a great relief when you can see the electricity is better and it won't be a danger for the children. And, uh, and then we can move to the next one where we want to express uh, that we are very grateful for a very bright future ahead for many generations who will be at this school building, learning, growing, maturing, becoming productive and good citizens of Guatemala. And this is the, these are, are the pictures we have from the elementary school and uh, it is open for questions if you have questions about the elementary school. And in the next set of pictures, we will move to the Milagro Center. And then the girls are outside and I will invite them to come in. Wonderful, that sounds good. Does anybody have any questions about uh, the elementary school? Pastor Karn, how many students do you think you're gonna be able to have in there? That's a huge, a huge facility. Oh yeah, it will be, it will be a lot of kids. Uh, we, have, we have thought that about 400 kids are going to be able to be in that property in the future. Right now we have 90. Wow, oh wow. Yeah. That's and they are not, mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that sounds like a wonderful situation right now. And it's um, so interesting that your students are on, on the, the virt on virtual school at the moment and having to send uh, papers and schoolwork home with them and bring them back. and reminds me of what my daughter did when we were uh, on virtual school for her as well. Um, so yeah. there's lots of uh, sympathy with those, uh, with those parents and those teachers there. So God bless you guys. Mm -hmm. Now we can move to the Milagro Center pictures. We don't have many of them, but uh, at the Milagro Center, 13 young women are here now. And uh, two of them didn't come back. We have three, uh, two new uh, young women and two didn't came back because they, are, they finished their high school degree and they were needed at home, so they didn't come back. We have three new ones, but one had to go back today, so she's not going to stay here. So we will have for the year 10, 13 young women. And uh, you will see in the next picture that it was so good to see how Milagro house is giving fruits. The young women, when they were at home in their villages, they were sharing their knowledge, baking bread with the ladies, working with the children, singing, reading, and praying. And we can see how much this program will give to the communities and future generations. And now I have the Milagro young women outside, so I will ask them to, to come in and so you can say hi to them. Thank you. 
Well, great, greetings to all of you from the United States, from the Southeastern Synod. Um, God bless you in this uh, new year at Milagro, and thank you for joining us today. Muchos saludos de parte de los hermanos de los Estados Unidos y esperan que tengan muchas bendiciones en su nuevo año escolar y que Dios los bendiga. Gracias por estar aquí. Y nosotros, la señorita, les mandamos muchos saludos y gracias porque ustedes nos están brindando la oportunidad para poder estudiar en Casa Milagro. So we, the young women at the Milagro House, at the Milagro Center, send you many greetings and we thank you for all of the support that you have given us and the opportunity to continue our education. Estamos muy agradecidas porque ustedes, por ustedes, porque estas señoritas tienen sueños que cumplir y gracias a ustedes están en el proceso. We are very grateful because you are supporting us and helping us to achieve all of our dreams that we want to be someday in life. And may God bless you as you care for other people and you at your service and testimony is a, a Christian blessings and uh, may God uh, bless you. Y esperamos que, que trabajen juntos y que este año sea de muchas oportunidades. And please continue working together and may God bless you this next year for Gracias. all of you. Thank you very much. Es Mi nombre es Johanna. Yo. Mm -hmm. Mi nombre es Irma. Mi nombre es Sandra. Mi nombre es Alma. Mi nombre es Jenny. Mi nombre es Leslie. Mi nombre es Lubia. Mi nombre es Sonia. Mi nombre es Aita. Mi nombre es Brenda. Mi nombre es Catherine. Mi nombre es Karen. Mi nombre es Laura. Salud. Saludos. Saludos. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Entonces vamos a. No pueden esperar. Quieren hacer. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for them for joining us and for sharing, uh, sharing such wonderful greetings. It's a joy to get to see um, all of these young women and uh, the bright future that God has in store for them. Yes, and thank you for being here. And this is all we have to, to present, the pictures. We have a bunch of pictures. Uh, we couldn't present all of them because uh, it will take forever. Uh, but we wanted to give you a small, um, that you could see something that we have done here uh, during this year that we haven't seen each other. And I don't know if you have any more questions or, or Diego, if you want to say something. I think we can wait for questions. <laughs> um, I have a question. How is the, uh, there were a couple of girls that were doing the medical training how is that going? Do they continue doing that, or um, uh, will will they be able to go to their homes and, and teach others? Yeah, it was Violeta who was studying at nursing school, and she missed one year, but she was needed at home, so she will continue there because she found a job and she's teaching others to about health training. And uh, she's getting older and she wanted to start doing something in the village. And so she, she found her place there. And it's, uh, it was very good to see her last month. I was there in, la in January and I had a chance to talk with her. And she's doing very good. Right. Good. Have all the girls managed to stay healthy? Yes, all of them. Uh, last year, we uh, eight of them went back home and seven stayed. And the eight went home, they came back. And they were really eager to come back. They were like, when can we go back? And so they came the last week of January 
and they are very happy to be here. And, and it was good to visit the villages and hear from them and see them in action when I was there and see them just participating and how their comments they do, how their parents were expressing. Uh, for example, Sonia told Luciano, dad, please don't have any more babies, you know, because I want to go to college and I need your support. And then if you have more babies, we are not going to be able to do that. So how the thinking, and, and she's a young woman, uh, very young, and it's good to see how they started thinking differently now. Pastor, have you and your family stayed healthy? Have any of you gotten the virus? And is there any idea that you'll ever get a vaccine in Guatemala? Well, we are getting the news that yes, we are. We, we will. We don't know when, <laughs> and it's so uncertain. So we don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Sadly, Karen Sofia got the virus, and, and little Santiago, but Santiago was like two days. Uh, with fever and then he was okay because he's literally, it seems like the, the virus affect less the, the young, the, the children. And Karen Sofia was about uh, 12 days uh, ill. We were very concerned because she has asthma, but she uh, overcame that it was before Christmas. So uh, okay. it was a very, we get scared because we get, we hear the news and but thanks God and all of the medicine the doctor gave her like seven different medicines she had to take and uh, and she overcame that and she's she's healthy again now good and your mom's good my, my mom is good and everyone is healthy and okay good. here thank you good okay Well, wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. And uh, Pastor Karn and Diego, thank you for the presentation. We really appreciate it. Well, let me... Um, I saw Diego's hand go up, so I think he has something to share. Yeah, just to, to end, I think, just I have just two announcements about the planning for 2021. We applied for a, a project, an emergency project with ELCA to have tablets for the councils in every church in Guatemala. So we are, we, they approved that. And now we are going to, to give the tablets and two young men from one village from Santa Amelia, they are going to give the orientation to the councils. So they will be available to have a Zoom meetings with us, the councils, the leaders. So we, we are going to continue with the leadership development. So that's a wonderful news for us because now with COVID pandemic is very, we are struggling with the, with them trying to come here. Uh, it's very expensive now. Also there is, and so we are adapting our ways. And also we apply for a program to make a agricultural sustainable project for the churches is optional so each family in the in the in the villages can apply can can be part is not like everyone needs to be it's a three years project and elca we apply for it in elca and it's a project to find new ways to harvest and to plant to recover the soil not just continue with uh, corn and beans like 100 years ago we know that it's needed, but also to rotate the crops is needed now because they are not producing the same amount. They also with pandemic and the hurricanes, uh, that was proof that we need to, to harvest. We need to, to, to have our own uh, food in the backyard. So this year is going to be a communal project in every, ch in every church. It's open for families in the villages. It's not a requirement to be a member of the church. So they're going to be, they're going to have greenhouses this year and start experimenting with tomatoes or broccoli, uh, herbs. And so we are, we are looking forward to see if it is a, is approved by ELCA and, and, and continue with, with the project. <laughs> so that's just a couple of announcements what is happening now in, in also in the, in the, in our mission. 
Thank you. Wonderful. Well, Diego, those are some very important projects. I'm um, just continue to be inspired with the uh, very faithful ministry that you and uh, the pastoral team and uh, the congregations in ELOG are doing. Um, and I, I love the example of, you know, with the um, agricultural project, that people don't have to be a member of the congregation, but that the congregation is sharing that knowledge and sharing that land to be able to make that a reality in the community. And I heard that also, Pastor Karn, when you were talking about how some of the families who were not affected by uh, losing their crops and were not in need uh, received that food aid, but then said, no, let's give this to families who are not part of the church who, who need it. I mean, that is a deep and powerful example of, of people being generous in the way of Christ. Um, and, and I love it. And that, that's so incredibly moving and a beautiful example. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Thank you for the faithfulness. Yes, thank you, because uh, we have seen fruits from the leadership development program because all of the pastors and lay leaders have been on their own for a year now that we couldn't visit them and uh, we couldn't be there with delegations and the churches are there. The churches are caring for people, are praying with people, are preaching. The gospel is being preached and, the, and no one church has been closed uh, in the way that they, they won't function again. They, closed for the pandemic, but they were uh, open serving. And that's a big testimony of how the programs uh, are giving results, uh, such as the Milagro and the youth and, the, and how the mature are, are the churches. Because just, say, just seeing the need in others. And even though they don't have plenty, they were willing to say, uh, just don't, I won't receive, give it to someone who really, really needs that and have lost their crops. And it's a big blessing for us seeing how God and the Holy Spirit works in Guatemala. And thank you because we haven't felt alone even once because you have accompanied us the entire year, even though we haven't seen each other. And just seeing your faces is a great joy for us. So thank you very much for all of that. And people in the rural area, they know that you accompany them as well, because we let them know that you are checking on the time on how they are doing. So thank you. Well, what a gift. Thank you, Pastor Karin. Um, I think uh, to, to close out here for, for this section, um, Pastor Jill Henning, can I ask you to offer a prayer of uh, prayer of God's blessing um, for Elog, Pastor Karin and Diego, and for Elog and their ministry? Most definitely. And uh, when you all get those um, greenhouses going and figuring out how to do that, you can teach our congregations because we also, in the middle of this pandemic, a lot of our congregations realize the importance of uh, community gardens that we need to be able to, to produce our own food locally um, because we weren't able to get things as well. So you guys can learn and teach us and, uh, and then uh, we can, you can accompany us in that because we need to learn as well. So thank you for, for your, um, your gifts today and uh, especially for those incredible young women uh, today. What a, what a blessing for all of us uh, to be able to, to see them uh, and to hear them, but um, uh, more importantly, to know that each and every day they are growing in their own identity as God has created them. So let us pray. The Lord be with you. With you. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the many blessings in our lives, but especially this day for the chance to be the body of Christ together across these miles. We thank you for the gift of technology that allows us to see our siblings in Christ in Guatemala, to see the amazing work that they are doing in your name in that place. We thank you for their witness, for their faithfulness, for the ways in which they have cared for their neighbors and for the ways in which uh, we have been able to walk with them and pray with them during this time. Lord, we, we look forward to that day when we can sit across the table and share your uh, very presence in the Eucharist with each other. But until we do, we pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to remind us that we are the church together, even though we are so far apart. So Lord, bless them and the work that they do. May they know that they are never alone in that work, that we hold them up and we pray that they hold us up. So in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Well, thank you, everybody. Pastor Carmen Diego, God's blessings to you. Um, thank you, Elizabeth.